Hello, and welcome to the Adventures in Arting podcast, where we analyze, explore, and celebrate the creative journey. My name is Julie Faithan Balzer, and I am a working artist living outside of Boston. I've been hosting this podcast with my super special co host and my mom, Eileen Shoe Balzer, since 2012. Hi, mom. Hello. So right up front, I want to let you know that Design Bootcamp starts March 1st, and Design Bootcamp is a workshop that changes your life, and that's not hyperbole. Um, it absolutely has changed mine and dozens of students who've been through the course. Um, if you ever felt like you're floundering around in terms of design, if you ever feel like you're not quite sure what your personal style is, if you're looking for more confidence in your art making process, all of that stuff, then Design Bootcamp is for you. So you can read all about it at juliebalzer.com, and I hope you'll sign up for a truly art transforming event. There are uh, tons and tons of great reviews that you can read too if you go to juliebalzer.com from students who've been through it. Uh, okay, so today's theme actually is perfect now that I think about it for kind of for design boot camp. Um, this is episode 140, Embracing the Unknown, the Power of Starting Before You're Ready. So, you know, a lot of times I think we wait until we're quote unquote ready to start a new project, to bring out that big canvas, to take that class, to enter the exhibition. You know, you, you're constantly waiting. Um, but starting before you're ready is about the courage of, about, of diving into creative projects without the safety net of full preparation, right? Um, starting before you're ready is a mindset. So what's a mindset? Oh, I'm so glad you asked, Mom, because I looked it up to make sure that I was right about what it was. So the word mindset was first used in the 1930s to mean habits of mind formed by previous experience, right? And so you can assume that that means that, like, if every time you ask for something, somebody hit you, you probably have a mindset that asking for things only gets you hurt, right? So uh, nowadays, we think of it more as a habitual or characteristic mental attitude that determines how you will interpret and respond to situations. So synonyms would be mentality, outlook, you know, your attitude, that kind of stuff. So uh, when I think about starting before you're ready as a mindset, what that means is that can you be a person who doesn't need to have everything set to already know the outcome, to have the full plan? You know, and it can be everything from like, are you willing to uh, do something I probably wouldn't do, but some people do do, which is get on a plane, go somewhere without a hotel reservation, right? That's a sort of uh, starting before you're ready that I that I know personally would be very, very hard for me. But maybe, you know, something else like maybe you go on a vacation, you book the hotel, but you don't actually have any plans and you sort of just see what happens when you get there and what you feel like doing, right? Um more, I was even thinking about, so my husband played volleyball in college and really has always loved volleyball. It's been an important part of his life. When I met him, he played on like a rec team and then he just didn't play for a long time. He has injured both his knees. He's in like PT for his knees. You know, he's very out of shape. But then he heard that there was a rec league near us that was having volleyball and he sort of hemmed and hawed about whether he should do it and he decided to do it. He started before he was ready. He's not physically in shape to play volleyball. He hasn't played in a long time. His knees are a hot mess, you know, but guess what? He started before he's ready. And every Thursday when he plays volleyball, he's in an incredibly good mood. Every Friday he's in pain, but every Thursday he's in a really good mood. And I think like that's another example of starting before you're ready. So I wanted to talk about it a little bit in terms of art, since that's what we're here to talk about. So I think of, in terms of art, like starting before you're ready is a mindset that embraces spontaneity and the willingness to embark on creative endeavors, even when uncertainty looms. So it's about breaking free from the constraints of perfectionism, which I am a recovering perfectionist, um, and trusting the creative process, which a lot of times when people say trust the creative process, I think it sounds like a whole lot of BS. But what I, and since now that we've done a podcast all about your artistic practice, I think creative process and artistic practice um, are very much the same thing. If you have a thriving uh, artistic practice, a thriving creative practice in which you, you know, have a series of things that you do and you have a rhythm and you have, um, you know, a, a, an idea of how things unravel, then, then you can leap a little more freely because you have that kind of safety net of the practice. So before we jump into sort of pros, cons, some ideas to get you started, all that kind of stuff, mom started this podcast before she was ready. 
because the first thing that she said to me when we turn on the recording software, she said, I don't get it. What is, what are we doing? What is this about? So mom, just from a little bit that I've described here, what are you thinking about starting before you're ready as a mindset? Okay. One of the things that I'm thinking is when you have a decision, let's say you make a decision to have a child, but you can't be ready, even if you think you're ready, because you've never had a child. Or maybe you didn't plan it, but it happens. Uh, what I'm trying to get at is that no matter how ready you think you are, you're not ready for all the things that could happen that you haven't anticipated. And so it's kind of an illusion to think you're ready. Because until you've done it, how can you be ready? It's like when you get a a piece of Ikea furniture and you have to put it together. But if you've never done that, the instructions might be mystifying and you might not have whatever tools you need. Or you just don't realize how long it's going to take you until you've done it once at least. So to anticipate everything is impossible. And... A lot of great things in life are the result of accidents or adaptations to circumstances that change. So I think what what I feel is that you need to start without feeling like you only have one destination because the destination somehow will create uh tension around anything that doesn't take you toward your supposed destination and frustration, you need to say, I'm going to enjoy the process and then see if I can get somewhere that I like. Yeah. I think like I can say that almost all of the sort of wonderful things that have happened to me, including this career that I have, have been sort of side quests, accidental detours, things that happen not necessarily on purpose. And sometimes planning is actually the enemy of creativity, of adventure, of things that are good, because you just, you don't know what you don't know, right? Right. Um, okay, so let's let's just talk down the list of pros and cons, because I believe in pro-con lists. I also have to say, Steve, my husband and I are watching um, 30 Rock from the beginning. He had never seen the series, and I've what? only seen like bits and pieces of it. So there's a lot of pro cons lists in that series. So it's on my mind. Anyway, okay, so let's start with the cons because let's start with the bad stuff. What are some bad things that could happen if you start before you're ready, right? So one sort of big idea is that a lack of planning can lead to challenges. That's the old, you get off the plane, you have nowhere to stay. Also, what do you put on the customs form when you get there, right? Lots of different problems. Um, so... Obviously, any project that you initiate without some sort of thorough planning has to face some kind of challenge. And the challenges could be financial, meaning wasted material, right? We all have that thing. I can't cut into this. What if it doesn't go well? Then it's wasted. But I would, I mean, I would argue it's not wasted because you learned something and you used it and materials are meant to be used, but that's a whole other conversation. Um, it could be wasted time. I put 60 hours into this and it didn't come to your fruition. But was it wasted time? Like, did you learn nothing from it, right? Um, it can lead to frustration. You might make things that are bad. Like, these are all sort of risks that could happen. But the other thing that's true is that even with planning, all of these things could happen too. You just don't know, right? Um, well, the other thing is some of those things can happen from preparation. For example, wasting money. Uh, oh, I can't start to be an artist until I have my own studio. So I'll go out and rent a studio because the studio is going to make me be an artist. Or a lot of people do art on a tray for, that they keep under their bed. I mean, who's to say, right? And then uh, sometimes you get stuck in needing the trappings that you think make you an artist. I have to take classes in such and such before I'm ready. And in fact, maybe the classes not only are a waste of money, but maybe they restrict your vision of what you want, you enjoy doing in art. So uh, the, that list of cons has a lot of possibilities that can happen 
and both sides of the list, actually. Agreed. I oh, mean, I think like I, the big... Uh, yeah, right. Sorry. Sorry, were you finished? I'm never finished. Just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that uh, dealing with uncertainty, I think, is probably the biggest con, which is if you're not a person who feels comfortable sort of not knowing what's next or how it's going to end, like... I find this a lot of times in class, I have to say like, trust me, trust me, or people want to see the finished product. And I'm like, mm, it's not really about the finished product. And I think that's a mindset thing about, do you have to know what it's going to look like? And so that you're aiming for that particular goal, or do you trust that somehow, you know, you're going to learn something and you're there for the journey. And th those are two different types of, of people. You know, I, I think that, um, for a huge portion of my life, I was, uh, I mean, I still am a deeply controlling and uh, perfection-led person, but it's probably my mother's fault. Uh, but anyway, so, but one of the things is that I have found that over time, like, as I've been willing to let go in my art, I've been willing to let go in my life. You know, certainly, uh, you know, as things have come into my life, like a child, you know, I've had to let go of various things. I've had to go with uncertainty. Like, I don't know what he's going to do, what's going to happen. I mean, that's the thing they always say, like, when we get together with friends or anything else, I'm always like, well, it depends what mood he's in. It depends if he's taking a nap. It depends, you know what I mean? And suddenly my life is full of all this uncertainty. And I think that um, at the end of this podcast, I have some tips for strategy, but I'll give you a little preview. One of the ways that I think is best for dealing with uncertainty and letting go of your perfectionism is becoming comfortable with who you are. When you know who you are and you're comfortable with who you are, then an uncertain situation can't throw you that far because you're still yourself. You're still, you know what I mean? You don't have to think too hard about what to do because it's like, well, what do you want to do? What do you feel is right? What does your in internal compass tell you, et cetera, all that? What does your intuition tell you? Like, just go with it. You know, as long as you're being true to who you are, then I think it's kind of okay. But we'll, t we'll talk about that a little bit later. Let's talk about pros because I think there are a lot of pros. Um, so the first is obviously, you know, that you're really unleashing your creativity, right? Embracing spontaneity leads to unexpected and innovative ideas. It is that thing about like your best idea is not your first idea. It's not your second idea. It's probably not even your third or fourth idea. It's something that's past frustration is probably your best idea, right? You kind of need to keep going. Um, and then also the idea like in your creative practice that experimentation becomes a driving force, fostering a sense of curiosity and exploration. And I think like anything you read about being an artist or being a creative person, the word experiment is in there. You can't read an article, whether it's from like Inc. Magazine geared towards business, you know, or whether it's in Better Homes and Gardens geared towards, you know, crafting where experimentation isn't a word that they use to describe the creative process. That has to be a part of it. And which I think is why, I mean, okay, this is my own, this is my own belief. But um, so obviously science and art very much used to be the same thing. The people who were scientists were also the people who were artists. Even right now, I'm teaching this practical color for um, painters class. And, you know, in the olden days of painters, they were scientists. They had to make their own paints. The colors of paint that we have today are based on their experiments with how to create different pigments from different materials and how to combine them to get different kinds of paint, right? They were scientists. They were dealing with chemicals and, you know, raw elements and stuff like that. Um, and somewhere along the way, we sort of separated art and science. But the thing that is so true about, about both art and science is that it's based on hypothesis, you know, something that you think is going to happen, and then experimenting to see whether or not it does, and then drawing conclusions from it. And so a failed experiment in science is a learning that you take, and then you have a new hypothesis. And I think the same thing should be true in art, which is a failed experiment should just lead you to a learning and then a new hypothesis, you know, that that sense of being a scientist, I think is really at the heart, at least of my artistic practice in a lot of ways. What if, what will happen if, if you combine these two, could this be, hmm, let me try to find some synthesis and connect this and this, you know, together to become something that's more. So yeah, experimentation, very key.
Getting back just to the science for a minute, one of the things I think some people have mentioned that they really like about your podcast and so on is that, or your lessons, is that you are very knowledgeable about materials, about the chemistry of materials, about what something is made out of, and therefore it helps you understand what you can and cannot do with it. And I think that one of the things that people get beyond as they get into art, if they uh, have that attitude, is you become able to more freely experiment because you're doing, there's an intellectual basis to what you're doing. And also, you're not afraid of an error, quote unquote, because you think you might learn something from the error. Yeah, I think that's very true. Like, if you feel like making, this is the same way that I've been trying to, this, everything comes back to raising children. But this is the way I've been trying to raise my son, which is if he does something and it is a mistake or it's wrong or it's bad, like, I, I try very hard not to sort of punish him for it unless it's something he, like, thought about it and decided to kick someone, in which case we have a problem, right? Um, but it's more like, teaching him to understand that mistakes happen and everybody makes mistakes. And like, when you mess up, you just try again, or you're like, okay, that way doesn't work. Let's try another way. You know, it's the old, like not crying over spilled milk. Okay. You spilled your cup. Let's talk about why you spilled your cup and where can we put the cup so that you don't spill it next time? You know, what can we do to think about that? And like, I hope that this will turn him into an adult who has that mindset, that mentality, that mistakes are okay that things happen and what a mistake is, is a, a lesson to you that you need to make a change. And when you make the change, then you can fix whatever happened because of the mistake, you know? Or you can find a new direction. Yes. The point is, if you're just doggedly wanting one thing, you don't have these wonderful serendipitous findings. Agreed. Okay, so we've talked about perfectionism, but definitely a pro of starting before you're ready is that it sort of forces you to overcome perfectionism. Um, because we listen, I'm going to say we all, because I feel like I do and everyone I know, but there are people out there who probably don't, but we all have a tendency to overthink, right? And fear mistakes um, and all that kind of stuff. But if you allow for it to happen, then I think that you can't help overcome your perfectionism. I mean, when you have that freedom to embrace flaws, it just opens up new possibilities for artistic expression and even how you view your art. I had a huge art epiphany recently that I think I've talked about on the podcast. And part of it was this woman said to me that my work was too democratic. And that actually is a perfectionism thing. That is a me trying to hit the checklist of, okay, I have green here, so I should have green here. Okay, I have circles here, so I should have circles here. Okay, I want everything to feel like it's had the same touch and the same whatever. And what she said in that moment to me, I don't know if it was completely conscious, but this is what I got from it, uh, was that word just explained to me everything that was wrong with my art, that I was making things too much too perfect, too much the same, trying to smooth everything with the same hand, overworking it, overthinking it, wanting it to kind of be right instead of just letting it be leaping, as they say. doesn't mean that I don't take all those ideas and principles and concepts with me, but I find now like in the art that I'm looking at on my wall right now that you can't see, but I'm enjoying, um, that one of the things that I'm doing is things are more uneven, unbalanced, you know, uh, sort of quirkier choices. And I love the work so much more. And it, it's not that it was um, like, it's a huge shock to how I was creating art before. It's like one little change that I've made one little change for such an enormous result. So that's exciting. I feel like overcoming perfectionism should be the title of my autobiography. Uh, oh, okay. And then let me know. You know. <laughs> Okay. And then the last thing that I'm thinking is a pro is just that you're learning through action. And this is the old thing of when people say to me, like, what would happen if I did this and this? And I say, I don't know, do it. Like, you know, what would happen if I did this and this? Try it. That hands-on experience provides valuable lessons that really contribute to your growth. And even if you make mistakes during it, like those are stepping stones towards mastery. As they say, the master has failed more times than the student has even tried. 
And I think that's so true. It's just if you if you can believe in mistakes as stepping stones, then that encourages you toward continuous lifelong learning. And I do think that it's not that you have to do everything the hard way, like read the books, take the classes, listen to the teachers, but then also make your own choices and try things. If somebody says this is the best way to do it, do it their way and then do it a different way and see if it really is the best idea. I mean, this is kind of like if you read a Yelp review and somebody says this restaurant is so great and you go and you're like, this is gross. Then you think, okay, that's one person's opinion or even 400 people's opinion, but it's not my taste and my opinion and you get to feel the way that you want to about that restaurant the same way that you get to feel the way you want to about the art you like the processes you like the materials you like all that kind of stuff that's my list of pros mom do you have any more pros for jumping before you're ready well i, I just want to say that you don't understand that all through life all through your day you are jumping before you're ready on a lot of things but if you've done it before it seems less momentous and you hardly even think about it oh this is happening i'll have to call a plumber you know or uh oh i forgot this at the store so now i'll have to improvise on this recipe that i'm making that, so it becomes easier if you've done it before we're back to the IKEA furniture, but the point is, it actually it becomes another tool in your toolbox. It does, and I think there are several famous quotes from various artists that are about like taking action. Picasso has a great quote. I'm going to mangle it, but it's some version of like there is, you know, action is the only way or something like that. And and Go talks about you know imagining like if people had the courage you know, to always act. And, and I think that through art, there have been artists who have le left not only when they weren't ready, but when um, the general audience wasn't ready. You know, if you think about how Picasso's like uh, Mademoiselle de Avignon was received when he released it, you know, Matisse very famously thought it was a joke. A lot of people didn't take it seriously or think it was great art, you know, or his Guernica which was a political statement, which was something that just wasn't as done in those days. And it was a big, like, what are you doing? Or Jackson Pollock strip paintings or, or, or like, there's so many examples where things came, you know, at a time that p other people weren't ready, which is another kind of way I think that artists have often leapt forward. And, and even if you like read interviews with these artists about some of those choices and some of the things they did, I'm not sure that they were conscious of how important these things were or what it was they were doing. They were just trying to work something out. They were just trying to get an idea worked out and, you know, not necessarily ready for the onslaught of greatness that was going to come from that. Okay, so practical tips for starting before you're ready. We're making this a very practical podcast with a list of to-dos that you can do when you turn this podcast off, okay? So if you want to get into a starting before you're ready mindset, which I'm going to call a creative mindset, a, you know, go ahead and do it mindset. So how can you do that? Baby steps, right? I'm, this is not like, you know, show up at the airport with no luggage and a passport, book a ticket, end up in Istanbul and have the time of your life. This is break down larger projects into manageable steps to make the risks less overwhelming. So maybe you're going to take a little baby risk today and then you take a slightly bigger one tomorrow. The same way that like you don't teach a child, you know, they come out of you and you're like, okay, run. It's like the little tiny bits. Okay. Let's learn how to breathe. Let's figure out that our hands are attached to our body. Let's learn how to hold up our head, roll over. You know what I mean? Like there's a series of steps and the same thing is true. And I think, um, it is true that you are, as you begin making art, like you do go through that period of like, you're a baby artist, you're an adolescent artist, you're, you know, a young adult artist, and it doesn't really depend on your actual age. It depends on where you are in your journey and you have to do what's right for you at that moment, right? You wouldn't compare an adolescent to a baby in terms of their abilities. So why do you do it in art? Just because you're both 50, doesn't mean that you're in the same place in your art journey, okay? And just remember that gradual exploration allows for a continuous learning and adjustment, right? We don't want to like shock the system. 
Then I want to go back to what I said at the beginning of the podcast when I talked about an art practice. I think you can find safety in your practice and you can allow your artistic practice to guide your work. So what I mean by that is, let's say where you start taking some risks before you're ready is in your sketchbook. You have a sketchbook practice, which means, you know, every day or every other day you go into your art space, you open your sketchbook and you do a couple of things. Maybe instead of doing the things that you're used to, you take a few risks. You start drawing, even though you can't draw. You start painting, even though you can't paint. You start making abstracts, even though you don't even know what that means or what that is. You know, you start copying work, even though you don't know how to copy work. Because I think that when you keep doing it and it's within this safety net of your practice, then it just becomes suddenly, you know, it becomes very safe. I can say that I started taking risks in my art journal a decade ago. And now, It doesn't feel like anything to do some of those things that I thought were risks, you know? And I think that's true so often, which is something that was risky for you then may not be risky for you now, but that only can happen if you take the risk now. So that it's like, it's like, um, somebody once said this to me about cleaning my studio and I think about it often. I'm not always good about it, but I think about it often. They said, I clean my studio as a gift to future me. Because future me, you know, wants that studio to be clean. And I was like, oh, that's such a, that's so true. Because whenever I do something like that and I come into like a clean space, I'm like, oh, yesterday me, good job. Uh, And so sometimes it's like. me, as simple as making your bed in the morning. It's like a gift to you because that night when you come into the bedroom, everything will be calm. Exactly. And so it's like you want to say, like, take a risk for future you. Maybe if you're doing it for someone else, i.e. future you, it's easier to think about it that way, right? Um, And then I think a big overarching thought that I have that really helps me to take risks is what we talked about earlier too, which is remembering that creativity is about taking risks and being unconventional. Like that's literally baked into the thought of creativity. The reason that there are all these business articles about creative business and creative this and bringing creativity into your business is because you get incredible results with creativity, but it's very scary. It's risky. It's unconventional. And so I do want to say, like, this is kind of like that old line where they say, um, follow your heart, but take your head with you. And I think that's important because it's the idea of an educated risk, right? Sure, I'm going to leap but I also have some thought, I have some knowledge, I have some things that I can do with it. You know, it's the same idea as that Viola Spolin quote, which I use over and over because I believe it so much, where she says, improvisation is the moment when planning and opportunity meet. It's not a, just a like, blah, 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 make anything up. There is planning, you know, that you have done. And so I think that creativity a lot of times is an educated risk. You have some sort of knowledge base. You have some sort of experience. You've been involved in some sort of, you know, a practice. And then, boom, your moment comes to take the risk. Okay. And then also remembering that meaningful risk uh, really helps us to feel passionate and alive again. Like, if you live a life without any risk, I just feel like that would be so boring. Even if it's like, Do you order the same thing at a restaurant every time? Do you have the same coffee order? Do you wear the same clothes? Do you you never change your hair? I have a haircut today and I've been thinking, am I going to do something crazy? Am I going to do something normal? Like, what am I going to do? Like, what, what what is a risk you can take in your life? Whatever it may be. And now this is going to go back to the idea of um, knowing who you are, because the thing is, as scared as you might be of risk, it's good to remember that there's very little risk in being true to who you are. But there's a great risk in trying to be someone that you're not, right? It can actually be like be dangerous to your health and well-being. You need to connect with you who you are, whether that's meditation or yoga or walking or therapy or whatever it is. But the more that you know who you are, then the less that a situation can throw you. So for example, if you if and what I mean by this in terms of art. I mean, there's a lot of ways that that's true in life. But what I mean by this in terms of art is if I'm painting and I suddenly am like, I hate all this. If I know what I like in art and what appeals to me, I can then analyze why do I hate it, which then helps me figure out how do I fix it, right? Or even if I know my process and I say, oh, I always get upset 
and then I need to walk away. And then the next day I like it. That happened to me today, which is I hated this piece that I have on my wall last night. And I came in this morning and I was like, oh, I really like that. And I just needed the distance. And that's me. Last night I knew I was like, go to bed, go to bed, Julie. You need to go to bed and walk away from this artwork. And that is again about being true to yourself, knowing who you are. I find a lot of times now I'm reluctant to do kind of these live demos or a painting that's all in one shot because I know that in some ways I'm not being true to myself when I do those because I'm pushing myself to do things I wouldn't normally do. I'm trying to get to a good outcome instead of letting it ride. I'm trying, you know, I'm just, it's, it feels more risky than it used to even because it feels more like being fake. It feels more like not my real process. It feels more like um, too much thinking. And that, which I think I used to do a lot of, and I just do so much less of now. Um, and then the last point that I want to make before mom can bring her uh, advice. Incredible and, wisdom. Incredible right? spicy wisdom uh, is that I want to say that I think taking risks is essential to living a creative life. Okay. That uh, curiosity and wonder are two of the guiding factors, I think, of creativity. And if you are curious about something, then you pursue it, right? There's risk in touching that thing that you found on the ground. There's, you know, some sort of like, uh, you're wondering about something or you have wonder about something. And so you want to try it, even though you're not ready, you're not equipped, you're not you know, anything. I mean, all of those things I think are wonderful opportunities. So the two things that I want to say to you is take the risk. It's worth the journey. That's absolutely true. Okay, mom, tell me your thoughts on how people can do this sort of starting before they're ready if they're nervous. Well, I think you have to ask yourself, why are you doing this? For example, saying hello to a stranger at a cocktail party, if anybody still goes to those, uh, that's a risk. You might get stuck in a corner with someone you're not interested in pursuing a relationship with and you can't get away. I mean, but the real risk is what? A few boring minutes? the possible advantages. You might meet someone who's very interesting, whom you enjoy, you know. Uh, I think you have to say to yourself, what is my goal here? Well, if I go to the cocktail party and my goal is to stand alone in a corner or only talk to people that I already know, then maybe the risk isn't worth it. But if my goal is to meet new people or stimulate my mind with new ideas, then it's probably worth that little risk. So when you think about the risks you're taking, I mean, climbing up to the top of your roof and jumping off might be a level of risk that you're not interested in, but going, taking a class in something that you didn't have interest in before just to see if there's anything there for you, that's that's probably less of a risk. Could be a little money you're spending, could be some time, could be traveling someplace where you hadn't intended to go. But I think you ought to figure out if the risk is worth taking, not by whether you're already interested in doing that, but whether the expenditure of whatever time, money, uh, is worth the possible outcome. Yeah, I think, again, like, starting before you're ready is taking, the reason I didn't say a risk mindset is because I think risk has some negative connotations and doesn't always indicate that you're making sort of like an educated guess. And what I would say is starting before you're ready is about saying it's something I want to do right? So you want to do it. It's not just like a random thought that crossed your mind. And even though I'm not quote unquote ready, I haven't done all my studying. I haven't done all my prep. My art level isn't as high as the other people in the class, my whatever. It's that you are just going to take the leap and believe that you can sort of catch up or do it on the way, on the fly as you're doing it. And I think you learn from it. I mean, 
I definitely, I'm thinking, so I'm thinking about this exhibit that I had at the library, which is, or that I have at the library right now, which is that you kept encouraging me to apply for an exhibit at the library, da 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 da, da and I was like, I don't know, I don't you know. Ignored me, you ignored me, yes, as usual. I was like, I don't think I'm ready, like da 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 da, all this kind of stuff, and then of course I applied, and they were totally full, and it was like, oh, now I have to wait two years, even though now I think I'm ready. And then you'll be ready, Julie. That's what right? they gave you. And then, right, the exhibit came and it's like, okay, you've got, you know, 24 hours to get this together. And it was like, oh, uh, now I'm really not ready to do this. But you know what? In the end, it's there. It's great. And it doesn't matter that I wasn't ready. Now I feel accomplished. I know what I would do differently next time. I have some ideas for things like that I just need to have in my studio so that I can be ready for the next opportunity. And again, I think that when you say it's another way of thinking about this is saying yes to things. When an opportunity comes, instead of being like, oh, no, 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 I can't do that. And taking yourself out of the running, saying yes. So starting before you're ready could be another way of just saying yes. When Steve, my husband, found out about the volleyball, instead of saying, oh, I'll wait until I'm more in shape or my knees are better, he just said yes. So what can you say yes to, right? Um, what can you say yes to, Mom? Lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I have to see what I say yes to at the hairdresser. She uh, has taken some definite crazy steps with the color of my hair recently, and I'm trying to figure out whether I'm okay with it or not. Uh, so just to remember uh, that starting before you're ready is not a one-size-fits-all approach. It's a personal journey in creativity that requires self-awareness. That's that whole knowing yourself thing. Um, and a willingness to take risks. And they can be baby risks and then maybe get bigger and bigger and bigger as you get more and more ready. Uh, so embrace the unknown, trust your instincts, and let the journey of creative exploration unfold. Some things that you should know about from around here are, of course, monthly membership of BallsResigns.com. We offer uh, a diverse array of classes, tutorials, vlogs, and art inspiration. I know how I always say we offer, but it's like the we is me. It's me. I'm the one who does everything. There's no one else who works here. Uh, and then I am teaching this class, Practical Color for Painters, which we had the first class the other day. It was absolutely fantastic. If you have any curiosity or desire to really understand how color works without having to like pay for a fancy four-year art school or study a lot of sort of technical jargon. This is the class for you. You can join it anytime in 2024. Um, I've been grading quizzes today and, and I use the term grading very loosely. There are these quizzes that are in the classroom to help people with their knowledge and it's exciting to see people coming in, you know, and really already knowing their stuff. Um, and then also design boot camp again starting March 1st. It is six weeks to transform yourself, transform yourself into a better artist. You know, if it were uh, body boot camp, I'd say, you know, six weeks to a better body. It's art boot camp, so it's six weeks to better art. So you can find me at juliebalzer.com and all over social media as at Balzer Designs. But I really hope most of all that you will sign up for the weekly newsletter. That's the best way to make sure that you keep up with the latest news. There's a big button on the homepage of juliebalzer.com where you can do that, or you can go to the show page for this podcast to find the link. And if you'd like to help the show, you can leave a review, mention us on social media, or tell a friend. And thank you so much to everyone who's done that. I've seen a bunch of social media mentions lately, and I really appreciate it because all of those things help other people find the show, which is our goal to reach a bigger and bigger audience, right? So thank you so much for listening and subscribing. We'll see you the next time. Oh, wait, I have one other thing yeah. that just occurred to me. If people have ideas for uh, podcasts that they would like mm -hmm. to have us address, they could send suggestions because uh, the hive mind is often smarter than just the two of us. 100%. I agree. Send me your ideas. I'd love to hear them. So now we will see you the next time on the Adventures in the Arting podcast. Bye.